Sounds great. Well, hello again. This is Denise, mm -hmm. Gloria, yes. Amber, mm -hmm. coming from Family Worship Christian Church, and we're so glad to be able to be here today. We are on our second session of Godly Submission. Now, don't turn this off. Don't shut us down because I think you're going to enjoy it. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Amen. We are. We're going to have a little bit of fun. In fact, when Pastor John counting, counted us down, he started with submit, five, four, yeah. three, two, one. So we're having <laughs> fun. And it's great fun to be able to be with you. But I have Amen. to especially thank, there's a person you don't get to see, but she is so vitally important to these taping. And her name is Linda. And she is such a blessing. And we get to see her. You don't get to see her, but she's beautiful. And she oversees all of this. So a special thank you to the fourth woman in this That's session. Right. So Amen. thank you, Linda. All right. So godly submission. My question to you is, has God put a person in your life who has the right to speak to you about areas of adjustments you need to make. I didn't say give you high fives, give you accolades, and tell you how great you're doing. I said <coughs> adjustments that you need to make. Has he done that? Because in a godly, uh, in our we have an opportunity to learn a lot about submission in that in that position. Amen. So I want to start by saying submission is an evidence of a focused heart. Um, and I can tell you this by, by a personal example. If you resist to the person that God has brought into your life to uh, give you those opportunities and help guide you and help give you adjustment opportunities. And again, we learned last, last week Submission is a matter of our heart. Absolutely. It is not a forced thing. No. It forces no. you to submit, right? But when we resist or we become defensive, I realize that my heart could start getting hardened in that area. Yes. And so if you've ever been in a relationship that's been abusive or you've got somebody has um, tried to make you submit, um, kind of like that Roman government, they just push you down, make you submit, yeah, and things like that. You can, you can, um, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about godly submission to authority that God puts over us. Not perfect, but godly authority. And we wanna keep our hearts soft and we wanna make sure that we can check the condition of our heart. So this is kind of a topic, we're gonna to check a little yeah. bit of the condition of yeah. our heart yeah. and we're gonna talk about submitting. So <clears throat> can you submit to God, to people and to those uh, in authority over you? An immediate sign of a hard heart is problems with authority. If you have a problem with authority, you might wanna check up on your heart condition uh, because we know, number one, is submission easy, Amber? No. Is submission easy, mm, Gloria? It's challenging. It's it is challenging. challenging. Mm -hmm. And it's we talked yes. about that. If you feel that it's easy, no problem, easiest thing to do, that may not be submission. That may be agreement. Mm -hmm. You may be totally in agreement. So, Amber, I want to start ask in asking you, can you remember a time when somebody who had godly authority in your life, maybe spiritual authority, whatever, brought correction into your life. Was it difficult to experience that? Or did you find it easy to receive that? And what did you learn from that experience? Um, I, I know more of when I was like a baby Christian, it was very difficult for me to receive correction mm -hmm. because I, I was kind of like fragile, but at the same time, I was like, I don't know who I can trust, who I can't trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, but God was in specific people to talk to me that I knew was specifically from him. And so um, when I did receive it um, and I did the correction, I noticed things went better, you know, and I had peace about it and I knew. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a learning curve. And I was thankful that they did tell me those corrections because some things, um, if I kept doing it, I would get deeper, deeper into um, disaster or you know and so it was kind of like a correction like wake up but um it was said to me in love so i received it um sometimes i receive correction even during um services you know 
pastor will be speaking a word and it will speak to my heart and I'm thankful for those corrections. When I was a new Christian, it was not easy for me to receive it. But as I'm growing with God and learning and, you know, when I went to Bible school, um, I also was learning, you know, more and more about the word. And so lining up with him makes my life a whole lot better, you know, mm -hmm. submitting and lining up with his word can change my life in a completely different direction the way that God wants it to be on the narrow path. And so for me, I'm thankful for those experiences because they changed my life forever. There are some things that people came to me for correction that I should have listened to, but I didn't and I ignored them. And then later on, I found out the Lord was trying to pull me out and I wasn't listening. And so it was like a learning experience, like, okay, I need to pay attention, especially listen in here because someone could be telling you something and if you don't have peace about it or if it's something that's trying to tear you down you know that's not god if it's something from the word or something trying to pull you out of a situation that could be really disastrous then listen because god's a loving father and he wants what's best for his children Amen. that's good so for that's me I'm, now i just say yes lord i don't even question him i used to try to reason and figure out okay well why do you want me to do this but I know now, like, if I reason long enough, I could miss that moment where, you know, mm -hmm. and something could happen, so. <laughs> right, right. You know, we think about when we, and that was so good, when you think about, you were talking about being a baby Christian. When you think about rebellion, different than when you're a baby Christian and you're learning and you're growing and you're learning how to walk in the ways of the <laughs> Lord and... All of that, you know, you're learning how to work this out. There's a difference between rebellion um, when uh, a word is given for someone's benefit. Let's say, take a teenager, for mm -hmm. instance. If a teenager um, has problems with authority, um, they may not be the only ones. There might be some issues that might be going on in their home. You know, there could be something. I remember I heard this um, minister say this, and I'm going to share this. It, a, a teenager with problems at school with authority might have a father who says, where's my fuzz buster? You know, I want to obey the law. I just want to make sure I don't get busted by the law. Mm -hmm. See, and purchasing equipment to purposely break the law, et cetera, et cetera, may not be the best representation right. of a godly character, right? If you break the law and get a ticket, you should say, are you ready, everyone? Um, I'm practicing this. Now, I haven't had a ticket for a while, and the last time I had a ticket, I don't think I said this. I didn't argue with the officer. I, I have enough. Cried. You know, yeah. let's be, let's be <laughs> under authority right here. <coughs> Thank you, officer. I was breaking the law, and I deserve to reap it what I have sown. Give me the ticket and we don't make excuses or try to talk our way out of it. James 4, 7 said, submit yourself then to God. Oftentimes he has different people in authority, like law enforcement and things like that. They're in authority for reasons. And then he goes on to say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Authority is not the devil. Authority is not the devil. Now, sometimes they can maybe have some issues and they got to get sure. things right and et cetera, et cetera. But godly authority is here to help us. So we trust in God, we submit to his will, but it takes, it takes strength and trust to humble ourselves and to submit and obey. When I realized that it takes more strength of character and more trust in God to submit and obey, that really kind of set me free because it's not a weakness. It really takes a whole lot of trust and character in God. Many people don't know this, and um, Gloria lives with a colonel. I do. In I the do. U.S. Air Force. That's right, retired. A retired retired. now colonel. But That's a, right. And we honor and bless him. He's That's a blessing. Right. He is yeah. a blessing. And um, I'm, Craig and I are not perfect. Good Lord, I wouldn't even want anybody to think that, because if you think that, you've lost your mind. But this being said, he has allowed me uh, to be in a relationship uh, that is a, it's God oriented in that he is the head of our household. He can be trusted. 
he would never make a decision, not a conscious, deliberate decision that would cause us anxiety or failure or monetary loss or sickness or disease, anything like that. And so submitting to him has given me a picture, humanly speaking, as to what it looks like to submit to a father who is loving, who is kind, who will never do anything to harm me and things like that. And so I'm appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. I'm appreciative. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it, it's been, I'm not saying that submission has always been easy because you take an independent farm boy from New Jersey and you take this <laughs> woman from Texas who was raised extremely independently and you throw us in a household together and God says, okay, go play nice, go play nice. And you think, oh, right, right. <laughs> so we've had our moments. We've had our moments of intense fellowship. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Um, when Craig comes in and says, he always, he always asks my opinion. He honors my opinion. He does. And he comes in and says, hey, this is a decision we need to make. Let's talk about this. And if I say, well, I think we need to go this way. And Craig says, well, I was thinking maybe this way. Then I say, let's do your way. Let's do your way. Because I know that he will not deliberately shoot us off down the river for something bad. And sometimes if it doesn't turn out that way, my job is to stay in submission and not come in and say, well, I tell you what, if you'd listen to me, you know, yes. I mean, no, because then you get rude. No, I told what, you how, so. how is it? Yeah. 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 No, you know, I think I've been walking in this a little longer than you have. Oh, please. I mean, <laughs> you just know that the father's looking at you going, you know, so yeah, it gives you an opportunity uh, when there's a mistake or something it, out of good intent, something happens that doesn't turn out the way you thought it was, to still be submissive mm, and, to, and to honor his position and to respect him. Mm -hmm. And isn't that the way it is with the Father? Sometimes we, we think it ought to turn out a certain way, like Emma was talking about. I know exactly how this is going to work, <laughs> right? And it doesn't. Uh -uh. Now, my expectation <laughs> is that the Word of God is always going to come to pass. How it comes to pass is how God brings it about, right? Yeah. So I'm, that's not my business. My business is just sit and believe. Believe for the manifestation. And so I am, no matter what happens in the meantime, I am to remain submissive to him. Mm -hmm. And let him that's do what he That's in the kingdom. That's right. In the right. kingdom. That's right. He knows best and that's right. he is right with mm -hmm. that and being submissive to him. And thank God he's a godly man. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yes. Because if not i mean motivated by righteousness right right that's yeah. right because yeah. if you were unevenly yoked and submitting oh my goodness yeah yeah mm -hmm. when, when you're oppressed and you're submitting because you're oppressed that's not a submission no that no. is absolute uh you're doing it to just stay safe yeah and you're doing it to yeah that's that's not godly submission yeah, yeah. And I think we we're, we talk about this because I mean you bring up a good point. There are people in situations where it's ungodly and yes. it's difficult, and they're in bondage. Uh -huh. They're in bondage. Uh -huh. Today we're talking about the the godly godly uh -huh. humility and godly authority. And oftentimes you see it in the workplace. You'll see it in the church. There's different uh, people that we report to, that we have the opportunity to receive from, to grow from to be led by and we purposely um, if you are in a job you have purposely accepted that job and you've got a supervisor that is uh, what you would say or what someone might say in authority over you you may respond to that person that person may not be operating in godly authority but you're in that position and you can submit to the position of authority um, where we get into a little trouble is when the, the authority might ask you to do something that's ungodly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not talking in personal experience here with the authority that I have at work, but I, I through, through my life, I've had people that were not godly in um, asking me to do things that I knew wasn't godly according to the word that's of right. God. And that's, that's right. you can submit to the position but you can express why I cannot follow that because of this. And then you might have, have some choices you have to make, right? right? But it's authority and so forth. Because God does. He has civil authority. Absolutely. Police officers, people that, you know what, when they have a badge on, they represent authority. Mm -hmm. And we are not just to say, uh, whatever, That's you right. know, and see how that works for you. You get pulled over and to say, ah, oh, whatever, see you later. You yeah. know, it doesn't work so well. <laughs> but God has people in authority on this earth. Absolutely. And that's good because 
we need we need authority otherwise we'd be out there doing our own thing and life would be quite chaotic wouldn't Mm -hmm. it somebody said one time uh well i just asked my i just say to myself what would jesus do i think that's great you're seeking him you're wondering uh lord but we have a whole bible full of what jesus did And he can guide us and lead us in the word. He can guide us and lead us when we're submitted to him in prayer. But it's what is God asking you to do? Is he asking you to get into a church, get into um, fellowship with other people, submitting to each other Mm -hmm. in a a church family? Uh, what, What does that look like? Ask him. And then when he shows you, let's endeavor to do it completely to the best of our ability. And if we miss it, what do we do? We ask for forgiveness, we repent, and then we move on. We don't get into shame and condemnation. We learn because we're growing and he helps us and he leads us. And aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad? What an opportunity. (laughs) An opportunity. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. This is our our last session, our second session on godly uh, submission. And um, if you've never received Jesus as Lord of your life, It will be the best uh, humbling of your life you've ever done. You will never regret it. He is a wonderful Lord. He is a wonderful King. He is perfect Mm -hmm. and it is a blessing. So um, you just ask him into your heart, receive him uh, and he'll just enter right in and your life will never be the same when you give him the authority and position in your life. So until next time, this is Gloria. Amber and Denise saying blessings to you. We'll see you again. Shalom. Bye-bye.